what she's saying really, she, he needs a pattern. Now, the number one thing he needs, he needs a heavenly father image. See? Oh, he needs more. I, I've heard that so many times. said, well, he, he just needs a man. He just needs a man. Well, I believe that. I believe, I believe he does need I, Every boy needs. That's the reason I'd say to the girls, uh, no matter where you live or who you are, uh, if uh, you're going to have a little baby and you're not married, there's just one sensible thing to do, and that's to put in a Christian home and give the baby a daddy. I'd fight for anybody's home if you had a husband and he was a Christian husband, but I'd say another thing. I'd never recommend that a girl marry some old sorry, dope-head or immoral outfit just to give her baby a name. It'd be the wrong name anyhow. Who'd want a baby named after somebody as sorry as he could be? I wouldn't. No, sir. I'd rather take that little baby and I recommend it to anybody that ever talks with me on the phone or writes me a letter. I'd say I'd just take the baby. I'd find a real born-again, spirit-filled Christian couple that loved Jesus and say, I'm looking for a couple of babysitters. And I'd ask them every question I could ask them. If they smoke cigarettes, I'd say, you'll never get the baby I'm going to have. If you don't read the Bible and pray together and live for Christ and go to a Bible preaching church and live clean, you'll never get the baby I'm going to have. I want my baby uh, to be so guided and led that I'll at least get to be with him when we get to heaven. I'd, I'd rather be with the baby in heaven than down here, really, because it's so short down here. And then you got to go work and make a living and leave the baby somebody else, and they don't care. All they want is that check when you come home from work. Isn't that right? You pay me. I don't care about your baby. Huh? This is a job. This is the way I make a living. I'd rather put it in the home in the arms of a mother and a daddy and say, look here, you take that child and rear it for me. And you better see to it that that baby meets me over in the better land. Now then, he said, I'm giving you a pattern, son, and I want you to go by it. All right. Now then, let's go over to the latter part, the 19th verse and the 20th verse. We'll find the other text and how precious that it is. This would solve all of our problems tonight if we just believe. This is not just for dads. This is for mothers. But this is for boys and for girls also. And this, said David, and all this, said David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me. What you been doing, David? I've been reading what he wrote. What did you find? He said, I found what he wrote on Sinai. I. I found something God wrote. And you know what? He made me understand it. And now then, son, I've got to tell you about it. And we've got a Bible pattern by which we're going to go. And you know the thing that fouls people up, they get out of the Bible. There's only one pattern. It's a Bible pattern. It's a Bible pattern. And God's got a pattern for everybody's life in this book right here. And here's the thing that amazes me. Without a miracle, there must not be a master. I mean, if there's no miracles, Gideon asked the question. You said, Hail thou mighty man of valor. He said, Where are the miracles? If I'm a mighty man, where are the miracles? When Nicodemus came to Jesus in the third chapter of John, what did he say? He said, Where are the miracles? I mean, I want to know about the miracles. I've heard about them, but I want to know about them. And Jesus said, All right, we'll start by performing one on you. Dear friends, you've got to have a personal experience. You've got to have a miracle experience in salvation or you'll never believe in miracles. And the only reason these uh, New Testament, I mean these uh, newfangled preachers that are running around today don't believe in miracles, they must have not had a new birth in their own life. How, how could they keep from belie believing in a miracle? If they had had a real spiritual new birth and made a new creature in Christ, and the people have said, I don't believe in the virgin birth. I don't believe it's necessary. You don't believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is just as essential. Uh, the, the, the new birth is essential but the virgin birth if I deny the virgin birth I'll deny the new birth you know why the Holy Spirit gave both of them I believe that the Bible said that uh, Mary was overshadowed by the Spirit of God and uh, she was expecting do you say brother Wolfe, do, you, do you think a man with good sense would believe that I got pretty good sense and I believe it I didn't have till I met Jesus he gave me good sense but I don't know of any good sense I had because good sense means God's sense. Amen? Amen? And I believe it. You'd say, but can you explain it? No, I can't. I don't have to explain it. 
I don't even understand how. When I start that plane and the uh, gasoline comes out of those wing tanks and auxiliary tanks and, and it begins to get in a certain place and explodes. You know how we came home? We came home in a constant explosion. I mean, we exploded all the way from Fort Worth to Corpus. I don't understand that. But I guarantee if that gasoline hadn't exploded, we'd have never been here. You say you're so smart you got to understand everything. You don't understand nothing. You don't understand anything. You just put it there. You don't even stand, understand your first birth. There's not anybody in here smart enough to, to prove me who your mama is. Not to save your life. You say, well, I'm certainly not going to live by faith. I'll tell you that. Blind faith. Blind faith. Brother, my faith has two good eyes. But they, that's what they call it. Blind faith, you see. Well, I'll tell you what, you can call it blind if you want to. It's led me more and provided more for me than all the rest of it put together. I've gotten a lot more by faith than I ever got by sight. I got 75 cents a day for baling hay by sight, and the Lord gives me $3,000 a day by faith. I like that better. You can just cuss and raise all the cane you want to, poor little things, because you're spiritually blind, dead in trespasses and sin, and you think you can go back home and make it and be happy. You'll never make it. Be dead probably within 12 months. You can't imagine how vicious this world is. How awful. Oh, I wish sometimes uh, we could have one girl to leave our home and go to a higher level. But we never have had yet. We've never had one of our girls to go out of the home and said, I tell you what, I'm just tired of this living around here. I want better living, and I'm going to go up to a higher plane of living. And they go up to some great spiritual place and come back in a little while and said, now then, I've got the answer, and I want to help you poor souls out down here. I mean, I've been to the Bible conference, and I've learned the truth about salvation, about Jesus Christ, and I, I've, we've never had one to come back like that. They go away clean, come back dirty. They go away, seem like fairly happy, come back miserable. And the devil gets in his lick all along the trail. Be careful. Oh, listen, we better take heed, he said, to our ways. And he, and, and he said, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me even all the works of this pattern. He made me to understand the pattern. Now then, verse 20 is the closing text, and here it is. David said to Solomon, his son, be strong, be strong and of good courage. Don't be a sissy. Be a soldier. We're happy you've joined us today for the Family Altar Program with Evangelist Lester Roloff. Our message today entitled, A Pattern for Children.